towards the start of this year, I became a senior dietitian working in um, the area of parental nutrition and the intensive care unit. So I guess to give you a bit of a background what parental nutrition is, it's it's basically feeding someone through the bloodstream, um, which is quite an interesting and specialised area. Um, and then seeing patients in the intensive care unit, and most of them are ventilated and sedated, so they're asleep. And so we feed them either via a tube through their nose or through their mouth. And I guess my role is working out what they need and how much they need. We have a little specialised team, so we've got myself as the dietitian, we've got a clinical nurse consultant and we've got a gastroenterologist. So three times a week I go around with the nurse consultant and we see every patient on the hospital that is receiving parental nutrition and then once a week the gastroenterologist comes around with us as well and again we see all the patients on parental nutrition. Um, so that can, it can be really varied um, depending on what's been going on and how busy a time of year it is, if there's been any surgeries that have been going on and not going so well. Um, so it can be anything from, I think, probably the lowest number of patients I might have on parental nutrition at one time is about, oh, maybe about five up to, say, 18 or 20. So it's seeing those patients. And then I go to the intensive care unit. And in the intensive care unit, it's a blanket referral. So generally I do, we've got it's 30 beds. So I do a quick round and quickly see everyone to make sure that they've been fed and are there any problems. And then generally that flags things and then I go back and do a proper assessment with individual patients. So it's uh, in terms of the volume of patients, it's quite a lot, but sometimes it might just be a really quick, they're going okay, all right, move on. Um, so I guess that's a, a general feel of the clinical work that I do. We've got protocols in ICU which basically determine how someone is being fed. Um, and ideally what we want is we want early feeding for all of our patients. So we want to see that patients are being fed in some way, whether it's through a tube or whether it's them eating within 24 to 48 hours. So a lot of my role is making sure that that's being adhered to and that we're and that we're doing that and if not, chasing up with the consultant and saying, hey, this patient's not being fed, is there a reason, is there something going on that I should know about or if not, can we start feeding them? So it's a lot of those discussions that goes on. Um, so sometimes it can be quite quick going, okay, they're not being fed, can we feed them? Yes, okay, and you move on. Um, but then for the ones who are there a bit longer, you obviously want to make sure that they're getting the right amount. So what we do is we base a lot of um, how much we feed patients on certain formula. So we work out, we do a lot of calculations. Dietitians are always walking around with calculators. So we calculate what they need based on certain requirements and we take into account, you know, if their temperature is elevated, if... Um, if we think they've got higher needs, if they've just had surgery or if they've got other things going on that might mean that they need a bit more. Um, and then we look at, is there anything going on with their gut or their surgery which would mean that they'd need a different type of formula? So maybe a specialised formula or ones with different fibre content or whether it's all broken down or if it's normal. So it's, I guess it's a bit of a, yeah, it's a bit of um, oh, just juggling on a day-to-day -day basis, but certainly it's... Um, it's having those ongoing discussions with the consultant and the team in ICU and the nursing staff to say, okay, this patient is being fed, are they tolerating it, um, are their bowels opening, are their sugar levels okay, um, is there any vomiting, is much coming out of the tube, and yeah, so it's basically those sorts of things. Would you say in ICU, there's there's a few different formats. So basically, we've got evidence-based guidelines that we base practice on. Um, so a lot of Australia uses what's called the ESPEN guidelines, which are basically European guidelines with how we calculate things. Um, oh, look, as a general rule, patients in ICU, because they're intubated and ventilated, um, they generally don't need as much as the usual population, at least initially. So... We base it based on 25 calories per kilogram of body weight. So it's all based on their body weight or um, if they're overweight, it might be their ideal body weight, so what they should be. And then it's a, a little formula that we work out based on that. So slightly confusing, but it would change depending on 
different conditions as well. So it's not one formula fits all. It's a bit of a, yeah, we have guidelines and then we need to make, I guess, a bit of a clinical judgment to say whether this patient's appropriate for it or not. Sweet.